Welcome everybody to our very first episode of Diagnose Me. I'm Carol Berger. Hi, I'm Nina Zimmerman. So because you asked for it, we have started to create some um, case scenarios where you're going to help us look at a patient and figure out what's wrong with them and come up with a list of differentials, because that is what you're asking for help with, is how do we come up with differentials? Right. And, um, the <clears throat> only way we know how to do that is to model our thinking for you. Right. So that you can see where we're going now. We're going to, like I said, some of these are going to be simple cases that are pretty straightforward and others are going to be more complicated. So each time it could be a little bit different and sometimes there could be a twist, right? But we're also going to talk, me and uh, Dr. Zimmerman, about different things that might might have changed the way we would have thought. Right. Okay? That you get an idea of that thinking process. What tests do we want to order for what and why? Okay. So um, I am going to share my screen. Okay. Bear with me just a minute so that we can get this to go right. And then I'm going to start the slideshow. Make sure I'm on the right screen. You're on the screen with the notes, Carol. There you go. That's okay. perfect. Yep. All right. Now, hopefully this is going to work right. Um, let's see what happens. So this is our patient. Let's listen. How are you doing, Judy? I woke up this morning and it burned when I went to the bathroom, which is not normal. And I felt some pressure. Oh no, have you had a urinary tract infection before? Not really. Did you recently have sex? A couple of days ago, but I get up and go to the bathroom right away. I'm pretty good about that. I see you do not take birth control. Is that right? Well. We use condoms most of the time, but we have been forgetting lately some. Are you late for your period? I'm pretty irregular, but I, I'm somewhere between four to six weeks, so I would say I'm in that time frame. Any blood in your urine? No. Well, let's get some tests and see what's going on. So what are the things that stood out to me was she talked about burning, right? Yep, yep urgency right yes um the things that concern me a little bit well first she said that she'd had sex recently why is that Im an important question and un possibly unprotected so i'd be worried maybe she's pregnant and also just that sexual activity can yep. cause a uti too so those are two clues that tell us this is a maybe more of a simple uti definitely yeah have to be worried about pregnancy because she's four to six weeks late and, and why is why do we need to make sure we know whether she's pregnant or not well it would it would guide our treatment right so if she has a uti and she's pregnant we need to be think about certain antibiotics that may be um uh, tetragenic or or harmful to the fetus so it's something right. really important that may guide our treatment one way or the right. other and, and common drugs that we treat utis for our backdrop Yes. So I was prescribed a lot, which shouldn't be, but for a simple mm -hmm. UTI, it's not the first drug of choice. But right. both of those drugs are teratogenic to mm -hmm. uh, first trimester. So that would be really important not to miss in a woman who could get pregnant. Right. Um, and then that leaves us with macrodan. Macrodan would probably be safe that first trimester. And yes. that would be the first drug we'd probably think of. Uh, but let's see how our note would kind of uh, go out here. How are you doing, Judy? All right, we don't want to listen to it again. Okay, okay, so going by old carts, which you've been learning about, right? We first would say this has an abrupt. Onset. Mm -hmm. That's abrupt. Um, she's Location. got, right, some pain, uh, pressure in that super pubic area. It's uh, recent, one day, right? Um, she's complaining of burning with urination and urgency. Nothing makes it better or worse. It's intermittent. And she's rating it as a six out of 10. So not super severe, no CVA tenderness, no um, fever, no chills. You know, if you go on for that review of systems, 
you would be asking more questions, right? Mm -hmm. But this would be an example of the beginning of that note that you might put in your HPI. She's 36 years old. She comes in with burning, with urination for one day, some urgency. So you'll feel some pressure. Recently engaged in sexual activity, which supports a diagnosis of a simple UTI. Right. And she's also four to six weeks from her last period. She's not taking birth control. Um, so that's kind of, I don't think we missed anything there. Our review of systems would go into, do you have flank tenderness? Do you have- Absolutely. A, do you have a fever? Blank tenderness is really important. Do you see blood in your urine? That's a bit, yeah. There we'd be exploring more of those, those differentials that are on the periphery. Because right now we're probably thinking of classic UTI, right? Mm -hmm. Here's some possible differentials. So UTI, why is it important that we rank our, our differentials? Well, we got We have to rank our differentials because that's going to guide if we're going to do any testing to narrow what we're thinking about with our differentials and to come Absolutely. up with the primary diagnosis. Yeah, right? so if we want to think about UTI, well, what we're going to think about for test would be uh, your analysis. Dip yeah, right? yeah, dipstick UA. Yeah, maybe yeah. reflex to culture, but we'll talk about that. Just depends on what what the symptoms are, what we think. And reflex to culture is so good because if it doesn't meet certain criteria, it doesn't go. Right. And if it does meet the criteria, then you can look at it and say, oh, wow, okay, you know, uh, we need, we've got the culture, you know, right. we this before we treat it with antibiotics. Could she have a UTI and be pregnant? Yes. Absolutely. And, and that's really one really good, important, we have to answer that, you know, could she just be pregnant and not have a UTI? Yes. That's possible too, because that first three months, that baby's right on the bladder, you know, she might be five or six weeks pregnant, maybe even a little more, um, because she said her period is four to six weeks late. So she's, mm -hmm. a, you know, she could be six weeks along, which mm -hmm. pressing right there, she'd be having urgency, right? Right. Well, yeast infection. Right. Why would she have a yeast infection? So she could have some burning with the urination with a yeast infection. Right. And pilo is always on there because if you've got a lower UTI, you have to think about an upper UTI. Right, right. Other People are... People are pretty sick with the pile, right? They're usually, I mean, not everybody's gonna have CVA tenors, but they're gonna run a fever. They're they're pretty sick. Um, so that's something you don't wanna you don't wanna mess with, but you also wanna consider it. Yeah, I mean, you want to ask those questions in your review of systems that is going to rule that out. You know, if you yeah. had fever, if you had chills, do you have flank tenderness? When you do your dipstick, if it's got blood in it, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes if it has those other things too. Mm -hmm. um, Really far out differentials would be like interstitial cystitis. Interstitial um, cystitis. You overactive could, bladder. Overactive is bladder. You could think about, although I think it's low on it too, is um, chlamydia, right? Because they're using a yeah, right. Effect, right? So yeah. you could you could That's also about think it. about the STI factor there too. Um, could be trick. Yeah. Well. Could, be trick, trick, could be trichomonas. Absolutely. Um, the other thing that could be that I just had recently, actually, and she was a young, young woman was, um, overflow. Oh, yes. 900 cc's of urine from a back injury. And so she had, oh, wow. um, so the MRI kind of, so, I mean, there are more complicated cases, right? But right now let's see what we have. These are the symptoms that we thought of. You guys might think of even more, but Burning with urination, she has that, right? And that fits that category really nicely. Urgency fits very nicely. But CVA tenderness, she did not no. have. Doesn't have any discharge, doesn't no. have fever, and she does have amenorrhea. Yes. So let's see where else things fall into. Urgency could fit with pregnancy and the amenorrhea. No. Yeast infection, she could have some burning. But yep. it really wouldn't make you be urgent and nothing else. No discharge. Discharge. Oh, yeah. The pilo really, I don't think she has anything that fits that. No, it, it should be part of your differential, but she's not having CVA tenor. She doesn't have a fever. She's not, you know, really, you know, feeling ill, you know, or looking ill um, if you're looking at her. Uh, but you know, you always want to consider that, you know, you can have somebody with pilot doesn't have the classic symptoms, but for sure, they're going to be pretty sick for sure. They'll probably run a fever. Some people have CVA tenderness. Some people don't, but most likely they will. 
Now, in her case, with it being so straightforward, she doesn't look bad. She's presenting well. She denies fever. She's only complaining of burning and urgency. We are pretty straightforward here. Really, we just have to focus. Is she pregnant and does she have a UTI, right? Yes. Um, so what tests we're going to probably get is a pregnancy test and a urinary tract infection test. So let's see what that is. Well, her HCG test was negative. So that says, that's okay, good. Pregnant, right. And our dipstick was positive for leukocytes and nitrates. Yeah. So those so there you go. tell us that this probably is a gram negative E. coli infection. She's symptomatic for it. And we can go forward with our plan of treatment. However, if she did look sicker, yes. she was having fever. She did have CVA tenderness. Yes. Um, now, the other thing I see students do is they want to order every test under the book. You know, mm -hmm. they're going to get, um, you know, just just everything. And so you you have to justify what tests you get for the reason you're getting them. Right. You know? Right, so you would get a CBC in the case of pylo because you might want to see how high of a white blood cell count she had. Right. If you expect the urinary retention, you want a BMP. You don't need a CMP because you don't need the liver function tests. No, you don't. But Just a you BMP need, would be enough. That would be enough. So probably a workup would be a BMP and a CM, uh, CBC for pylo and possibly either a renal ultrasound because it's cheaper. Yes. Than but a renal ultrasound would probably be cheaper if we are looking at cost, you know, just to see if there's any hydronephrosis, you know, and any stranding that's going on. But you could get a CT um, if you are looking for a pilot. To the abdomen, yeah. So definitely some things to think about. Um, and so in this case, what do you think we've got? Let's see. It's a... UTI. Dun, 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 UTI. And it's uncomplicated, right? Uncomplicated, simple UTI. This um, is the clinical practice guidelines. If you want to do a dipstick in the office, you can for simple UTIs, but you can make the diagnosis on symptoms alone. It's 98% predictive. Mm -hmm. um, in women that could get pregnant, you want to make sure you check that they are either on good birth control, you check for pregnancy, or give them an antibiotic that you know is not teratogenic. Like yes, teratogenic, yeah. That, right? You don't have to check for pregnancy necessarily. If you're going to give them macrodantin, because that's a choice you would have given them, you know? Right, so right. You want them to know, right? Um, and then we put in here, just for your own reference, um, the uh, reference is that to the International Clinical Practice Guidelines for the Treatment of Acute uncomplicated cystitis and pilo in women. Um, this comes from uh, last updated 2011. So it kind of gives you a reference as to the mm -hmm. clinical practice guidelines. But again, clinical practice guidelines, like you pointed out earlier, are just that. Yeah. If, I mean, they are guidelines. You know, I, if you feel more comfortable, if you're on the, on the fence and you can do a dipstick um, in, in your uh, practice, do that if you feel like it's important for this case for whatever reason to well, send it with the ua you could re reflex it to culture so that you know it's a beautiful thing it won't go to culture if it if it doesn't meet the criteria i mean remember guidelines are guidelines but the guidelines give you a lot of evidence based on research based on several cases of what is known right so if it's over 90 percent you know, um, certainty that you can do this on symptoms, kind of like think about asthma or some other things, then, you know, you can, you can do that. But what's really important that we're trying to stress is you need to think about your differentials and be systematic. Don't skip steps. Don't just talk to the patient. We had that interview and you go right to UTI. You need to make sure that you really evaluate all the symptoms, narrow it down, do some reasonable testing or um, 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 you know, differential critical thinking before you get to your primary diagnosis. Because if you don't systematically do that, do a good history, do a good review of systems to make sure there's another other added um, uh, symptomology, um, and then really you know do some reasonable testing to really narrow your focus. You may miss something, so that's why we're trying to model this behavior for you right. to show you what this is. You don't just go well, in and take also, a history. Yeah, you really have to go through the whole process. We're good. This was a simple case. Yeah, 
but they're not going to all be this simple and this straightforward. And we're going to show you those not to miss diagnoses and how those could have gotten missed. And how do you think some of us found those things out? Well, right. we missed them. We missed them. Yeah. yeah, we missed them and we learned or we or somebody else did or we heard of it. Um, and then we're like, oh, OK, I'll remember that next time. So we're helping you build your library of cases. We have a library. Um, Dr. Zimmerman and I have been practicing for over a decade. So that's like scary, right? But, yeah. um, but you know, we have lots of cases to pull on when we go, oh, that connects with this. We're going to help you build your library of cases. So I'm right. um, really excited. Don't expect them all to be this easy, but this is our first one to get you started. Um, and please, please, please join our YouTube channel. Subscribe to it so that you get notification for our next Diagnose Me. Yes. And until we meet again, we hope you stay well. We hope you check out our website at npeacechangingpractice.com. And of course, continue to listen to our podcasts. Thanks so much for listening and viewing. Bye, guys.